Yeah. The book of Matthew. Thank you all, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> lovely, lovely thing. I'm going to read you three poems from the book, from the booklet, and um, that's about all I'll do tonight. After that, you can listen to Ken. <laughs> Religion for the poor. Apollo settling into Poseidon's glistening Mediterranean. A midsummer evening in old Greece. Two Americans catch one last glimpse of the ancient myths, which they know are that, before swinging back to Athens to catch a flight. The plane rumbles and they both, Trevor and Trudy, Trevor, an architect who each day reads the Times and on the weekend, the New Yorker. Trudy, a high school educator of 20 years with a degree in law, clutch their hands around a crucifix and rosary and pray. Please God, let this plane take us home safely. Please God, let this plane fly safely. Homeric poetry stinks like a dead cow in the burning fields of Texas. The farmer has been taught not to smell it. He stiffs the cow in the trash and looks up to the heavens. Dear God, give me rain. Unlike in Homer, no God does listen. Beseech, beseech. It is not just Americans who prostrate in limbo, praying for salvation. It is also their brothers in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Palestine and Kenya. It is in Russia and Ukraine. In pockets, it is everywhere. In all humans, the beating heart of belief rages on, feeding the land with blood and bone in human sacrifice. In a time when only the privileged were literate, holy books were conceived by divinity by the gods and goddesses whose drachmas were heavy enough to do so. The human convinced that the words they were read were not tampered with. The human had no way of proving it otherwise. Now, Trevor and Trudy are different. We are different. We are modern humans, educated in the marble halls of modernity by specialized teachers. We know the religion is for the poor. <laughs> this next one's from a bit further back in the apocryphal Bible. It's called Pumpkinhead. I lays prostrate in their room, on their mat, with their beads in hand, after fasting all day and giving that old woman money. Outside, screaming echoes against collapsed walls and fires burn in fields. How dare I be born, Pumpkinhead, I says. How dare I be forced out into this hell? Are you listening to me, Pumpkinhead? I have done all your orange face has asked of me. I crossed my chest, I chopped my toes, I even clashed with my conscience and slaughtered them atop the mountain. But still, Pumpkinhead, you ignore me and I am left fighting the flames. Why won't you help me, Pumpkinhead? It is for you that I die. Then, from above, there is a flash and a crack and I bows their head, whimpers, crosses their chest, closes their eyes, chants, cries, and never sees it is only sharpy white sky sticks. That's two out of the three, so there's one more to go. <laughs> and that is back here. It's called Gethsemane Today. In the garden, where heaven's moonlight twinkles and the Saharas of day drip away into the cool stream of sleep time. 
Where headstrong voices fade forth to whispers, to wisps of wind. Where the sweet rifled shot of tranquility lulls to dreaming the dream universally. There is a crack, a dislocution, a splitting misjustice, or so it seems, that shatters the landscape like a homemade bomb exploding the western wall. The guards of the eternal gates. You have two choices. Raise your swords against them, slice off an ear, or open your arms and say, this is how it was meant to be. In this, the book of Matthew, there are no wandering mystics' answers. Hey, well done, well done. Fucking brilliant.